Hello and welcome to another tutorial on Blitz Basic. Sorry it's been a while since I made my last video. I can't exactly tell you what I've been up to because it'd take forever just for me to explain everything I've been doing. But I'll tell you one thing, playing too much 3DS gets you stuck looking like this. Alright, in our last uh, video, uh, we were going over types and functions and all that good stuff. I did notice a small mistake I actually put into my code. When I was playing the game, I noticed the game was slowing down. It's because I said, uh, bolt will delete if it goes off screen, but I put an X here. It's actually supposed to be the Y axis. My mistake, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you can put an X there if you want your, uh, if you want your bullet to go diagonal, but in this case, we're not going to do that. Uh, so anyway, that should make the game go a little smoother. It's going to delete the bullets when it goes off the screen, so every once in a while you make a mistake. Alright, let's make some enemies. And after I teach you how to make enemies, it'll be your turn to make enemies and uh, hopefully share it with everyone else. Uh, you can make a whole bunch of creative enemies in this type of a style that I'll teach you. So let's, uh, let's see, let's just call it enemy right now so we know what it is. And uh, type. And luckily, we'll be going, we'll be using all the enemies under this type. Yeah. I'm not sure if that makes sense right now, but anyways, instead of making a separate type for each enemy, we'll only be using this type to actually declare all the enemies. Let's do uh, what we normally do. Uh, X, make it a make it a float. And Y, make it a float. Uh, we need its image. Because we'll be using different enemies. Uh, let's see. Let's call it style. This will be different types of styles we'll, of enemies we'll have. Um, hmm, what else will we need? I think that's all we need for the moment. If we need any more, we'll go back up here and put in more stuff. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we merge in the font. We'll make it. That's way too clustered. Okay. All right. How should we start this? Let's first start by actually creating the enemy. So let's call this function. Oh, come on. What's wrong with the function? Uh, enemies. Like that. And end. Just so we don't forget that. Okay. For Let's just call him E. Uh, oh, e M. I guess E M will be what we'll call him. E M. Bunch of E M's. Uh, enemy equals each. As we get uh, into tougher concepts with uh, the coding, there might be a couple errors on my part. So please forgive me. But things will get a little bit more tougher as we move on. So. Uh, errors are fine. If you get a couple errors, don't worry about it. Just, you know, backtrack. Try to figure out where you went wrong. Uh, don't give up. Never give up. Okay. Now, quickly. Let's delete this real fast. Get rid of that. Whoops. Okay, anyway. Uh, the enemies I'll be using for right now are just the rocks. So, we're going to start with uh, Tiny Rock. I think that's how I began the game. All right, so Tiny Rock is what we'll start with. And if you want a closer up look of it, it is kind of small. This is what mine will look like. You can make your enemy whatever you want to be. It's just a basic rock. It has no power or anything. It just runs into you. That's it. Okay, so. And the rock style. And this is what style is going to mean. Each enemy is going to have its own style number. This is how I'm going to do it. Tiny rock will be style 0. Rock will be style 1. This will be style 2, 3, and so on. Each style. And this is where. And I remember in my last videos I said. Uh, when we put inside here the instructions, all of the enemies are actually going to follow along with the instructions they put there. Now there's a way to break the rules like I think I brought up in the last video. Uh, since if you watched all my other videos, you should be ready for more intermediate, more advanced uh, ideas and uh, uh, concepts in programming. So the, here's a little bit more advanced concept that most people actually don't follow by. Instead what they do is waste their time in creating more types for each individual enemy. So they have a billion types when that's not even necessary. This will actually teach you to make everything be directed to one type. That way you have each enemy doing separate things. That way they kind of do similar things, but they do different things, if that makes sense. So if uh, em slash style equals zero, so that means we're not going to declare a style number for it. It's just automatically going to be that style. If it's equals zero, then it's going to do whatever this thing says right here, whatever in between here. So I'm going to create a quick note. And call this uh, tiny rock. 
And this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, but once we have two enemies, it'll make more sense. Uh, anything that goes outside this if statement, uh, all the enemies are going to be doing. Um, and one thing they will be doing is falling. So let's do that real quick. EM slash uh, Y equals EM slash Y <clears throat> plus, you know what? Now that I think about it, we do need another type name. Uh, EM, it's called fall. How fast it's going to fall. All right, so thanks to this variable, excuse me, variable, uh, it basically means that different rocks will have different falling speeds. And uh, another thing we'll be working with today is random numbers. So I'm not sure if I went over that before, and I hope I did. I hope I went over random numbers before, but that's besides the point. I'll be going over it a little bit in depth today, and how to use them with enemies because it's really important to know how to use random numbers. Okay. So, means I need to spell it right. Well, I just got out of class and I'm kind of sleepy, so my typing is kind of whack. That's all I do all day is just type. All right, so another thing we need to do is upload. And an image. And let's call this tiny. Yeah, that's all we need to call it. Just tiny. Uh, your name might be a little different than mine. And on your enemies. Uh, let's see. Just because I like it really nice. Tiny rock. Ooh, I'll call it. Tiny rock. There it is. Uh, dot .png. Okay. And we need a mask it. Mask image. Now for those who have forgotten what masking an image means, uh, here the background is white, and I want the white to be transparent. So let's go, I forget what white is, either 250, 255, 255, 255, or 0, 0, 0. Go look at the color codes. Oh, yep, 255 for all of them. Uh, whoops, we don't need that. So we're going to mask the image tiny. Comma, 255, And that's the color code right here. There we go. And I'm not going to go in depth with that because I know I definitely go in depth with that in a different video. So you can go and track that video down if you want to. Uh, but we need to get going here. So, okay, let's upload the image. We okay, have a real quick thing that's good to use since. Uh, Here's our function, so we can just jump to it using this right here. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, but what we need is for things that aren't functions, we need labels. So instead of having to go back and forth, up and down, up and down, as the code gets more and more crowded, uh, we want to use uh, labels. So here's our images. So that way, I can just click on the labels here. Click on that. Types are also listed, so we can go straight to the bullet type and enemy type. So cool. Now our our uh, code's really, really easy and portable. We can go all over. All around drive all over the place. Portable. Maybe that's not the right way to use portable, but that's the way I use it. Okay, so now we have an image. So, what we need to do for all of them is we always want to draw the enemy image. So let's put that at the top, so that's the first thing it does, is draw the enemy image. Okay. So there it is, draw an image. And then we're going to call it em slash image. And then you gotta give it, you gotta put in the x and y coordinates. Okay. E and slash y. Alright. So that will draw the enemy image and also move it around. Now, if you remember in my last videos, I said uh, we'll be using types in this type of type where we place it where that shoots. See how we place it like that? Or not type, excuse me, functions. Uh, we're, we're giving it a better use, a different type of use that actually makes it more useful than. I already put it here where instead of just having it to shoot and just have like a definition, uh, we'll use it to create enemies instead of having to re keep on typing a new enemy over and over and over again. Instead, we'll use it. Well, first, we gotta put in 
enemies right here. So we'll draw that. Let's draw the images on top of enemies. The bullets on them. Okay, we'll put enemies at the end right here. You can put wherever it's comfortable for you. It doesn't even matter. You can be on top of everything if you want. That means, uh, oh, you know what? I want everything on top of the enemy. Sorry, whatever's drawn first is, goes behind everything else. So I want everything to be on top of the enemy. So if a bullet's going to hit it, it'll go on top of the enemy. And you'll see that the bullet actually hit. It. So, there. We want it right here. Uh, we're going to apply it right there. Okay. Yeah. So the player, if the player hits the enemy, the player will be behind them. Yeah, yeah I guess it's fine. Besides, wait, yeah, the rock should explode after. Okay, so there we go. Right now, we want to create this enemy. So we're going to create a new function. This is going to be quite, excuse me, quite interesting. This one's going to be called draw tiny. Every time we define this, it's going to draw a new tiny rock. And that's where functions really become useful instead of having to retype everything. A little tip I helped uh, one of my uh, fellow classmates in uh, my last programming class, I taught him about this because he was making houses in a 3D game. I said, dude, instead of having to keep on making houses and plotting and everything, why don't you just use functions? He had no idea what that was, so I told him what it was. And in seconds, he had a whole entire like city of houses he built at different sizes all things to the functions uh, of yeah whatever anyway so what this is going to do is going to right here this is going to draw the enemies this is going to create the enemies and add it to the game I hope I don't use a whole lot of time okay, em dot enemy equals new enemy just as we did with the bullets which is right here and yes our codes getting very very crowded and clustered you can organize it however it's comfortable for you but thanks to this right here this area uh, it makes it a lot easier just to jump to areas so it doesn't really matter how crowded your code is you should see you should see uh, my temple quest game my gosh that code is humongous okay anyways um, we're probably going to work with numbers yes we will okay Random numbers. Okay, so for one, let's define the image. The image is going to be tiny. Remember, image right here. We'll be drawing that guy. Okay, so there's tiny. Uh, EM. The style. We don't have to define it if we don't want to put zero because it's automatically going to zero. But I'm going to put it anyways. It's going to be zero. And then em slash x is going to equal, let's make it a random number. And I'll show you how random numbers work in just a second. Let's see the sign. It's 1000, so uh, let's make it between 10 and 9. Okay, so random numbers. Here's our first, uh, first look at a random number. I can't remember if I go over them, but I go over them anyways. Uh, the y is going to equal negative 25, so that way it shows off the screen. The fall, uh, usually I make this random 2, so let's make this random 2. Let's make it a RMP, which is actually a different type of random number, but please bear with me, just follow along. I'm going to show what that means in a second. Uh, between, um, no, I believe it's negative 3 and 3. Comma. Okay, let's start at the beginning. In order to find random numbers, up here you have to create some type of random generator so that way the game's not a continuous pattern. That way it's almost as if the game is random, but it's really not. So it's called uh, seed. Ren RMB just see random numbers and we're gonna set to the computer's milliseconds. And what that's gonna do is since milliseconds go so quickly, when it's time to look for a uh, random number, it's gonna select the milliseconds that your computer's running by. And that number is the number it selects since milliseconds go so quickly and almost 
untrackable or untraceable in accounting because it's just you know, filling so quickly. You'll never have the same pattern. So our random generator is ran off milliseconds. Now I've seen different types of random generators being created. Uh, not everyone does it by milliseconds, but that's how I do it. Since that's the only way I actually will know how to do it, not the only way I care how to do it. Since this always seems to work for me. So if you find another way and you want to teach me it, go ahead. Okay, so now what's happening is it's got a random generator right here. And it's going to choose a number between 10 and 990. And only a number between these two. When it's a full name like this RAND or an abbreviated version of random, uh, it chooses full numbers with no decimals. If it's RND, it chooses decimals. So it could be 2.9, 2.8, 0.1, and it's between negative 3 and 3. Another thing we do have to do is make this a float if we want the RMD to work properly. Or else if it's zero, it's going to be stuck at zero and it's going to not fall at all. Okay, so that's going to do that. Now, it's a function and it's not read until we uh, tell it to read inside the main loop. It's going back to main loop. Now, here's where things can get kind of bad. Drama, tiny. You know what I call it? Oh, it's that, it's all tiny. Yeah, this weird thing is gonna get bad. If I just put it right here, of course it's absolutely not gonna do anything since there's no collisions or anything right now, at the moment. But it's gonna draw a trillion different rocks and slow down the computer. Let's run it to make sure everything's working just fine. There you go. At random positions too, cool to look at, slows down your game. Well, it's going too going pretty good. I could shoot up these guys all day long and nothing will happen. Huh, well, it looks cool. It's an awesome screensaver. By the way, if you do want to learn how to make a screensaver, I'll be more than happy to teach you how to do that. Since we can make this into a screensaver, it's possible. So let's close this out. Alright, so there. Now we create our first enemy. I hope you're excited because I sure am. It's looking pretty dang good. Now, we already defined random numbers. I taught you a little bit how they work. Uh, in order to make the tiny rocks appear at random, we're going to set up a random number. But we're going to do it a little differently than you may imagine. It's not just going to always choose from the same random number. It's going to choose from a different set of random numbers. So, this is how we're going to do it. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of how to do it without it. Really well, well, whatever. If rand. Should we do it that way? Yeah, sure. Why not? Is between zero. Let's make it one, I think it should be. Yes, make one. No. Well, it's up to you. Uh, I'm fighting with myself now. Okay, so anyway, that's in. I'm going to call this just random. The variable we got defined up here. And you'll see what it does in just a second. Uh, we call it enemy random generator. And this is actually what's going to make or break your game, depending on how quick and how often your enemies come. You can always come up with your own method doing it. You don't have to do it my method, but this is the way I'm going to create the game for right now. Uh, if that equals one, we're going to draw a new enemy. Since uh, random doesn't have a number at the moment, uh, nothing's going to happen. So let's give random right now. A pretty large number. Okay, zero out of a hundred. If the since we're going to zero out of hundred, there's a one chance, one out of a hundred chance, or actually it's one out of one hundred and one chance that a tiny rock will appear. Now, if you want them to happen more or come more often, then you simply want to do something like this. Right, let me think it real quick. Huh. Let's see, let's call this one timer. Okay, good, that's not okay, yeah, timer. And we're going to create a quick timer right here, and that's going to actually subtract one from the random every once in a while. And uh, let's make it a float too. There we go, so let's see. Okay, 
since this is a full number, you can't subtract the decimal from it. Lucky. And this should work. If not, I'll have to create a different way of doing this off screen. Because it might take a little bit more time. So I actually forget exactly how I did it. But basically, this is going to keep on subtracting from random every time it hits 1. So it's actually adding like 0. 0 0.01. Well, to make sure I'm doing this right, and I hate to just test this right now. Such things have to be done. Okay, I want to display random and see what it's at right now. So let's run the game. It's at 100. Ooh, look at it go. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, it's not good at all. Well, for right now, I'm, I'm going to mess with a couple of different techniques, because there's several different ways to do this, but I, I tried to do the simplest. Well, other than that, right now, this is what you got right now. You can mess with it however you want. Maybe you can create your own way of doing this, but right now, I'm going to leave it until the next video to find out a better and more efficient way to get this uh, problem out of the way. All right. Well, I'll see you guys later until next time, which will probably be later today so you don't have to worry about or have to even wait that long all right see you later all right guys this is more of an added part to uh my last video i actually found out how to fix it uh it was right there in front of me instead of having to go through a tougher way of going through true and false and if this is true then make this happen uh i did find a way to make it uh nice and simple because I remember uh, when I first made this game I had a bunch of true and false statements and it got kind of clustered on just the timer but basically here we go it's gonna count down the timer if it and then breathe the loop or whatever it's gonna do we go back up here the timer is greater or equal to one it's gonna subtract one from the random generator then make timer zero and then end it and then continue the process if we look at it we have a nice smooth uh, countdown I did add an extra zero so much Count down a little slower than it did before. Now that's actually really slow. There it goes. There's 99. Uh, if you want to speed it up a little bit, just get rid of that zero. And you'll see it go down pretty. There we go. Nice smooth. And you'll see more rocks come down. I kind of want my rocks to come down a little faster, so I might change a couple of numbers. Yeah, see more like that speed. Also, uh, I do want them to go at a uh, angle. So we'll go over that in the next video for sure. Alright, have fun.